So in this video, I shall talk about, or I shall give you the formal definition of a copula. Right, uh, uh, it is as follows. A, f a function capital C from the unit square, which is this one, to the unit interval is a copula if the following conditions are satisfied. The first condition is right. the second condition the third condition Fourth condition and condition five The partial derivative with respect to u must be greater than or equal to zero. And the condition six, which is the final one, the partial derivative with respect to v must be non-negative for all u and v. So these are the six conditions a, a copula must satisfy. And if a, if, a copula, if a function satisfies these six conditions, then it is a copula, right? So in, what I'm going to do is to do some examples. I will do three examples. So in each example, I will show you how to s check these conditions. There are six conditions, okay? This is example, example one. Uh, okay. So this is the copula, the independence copula I mentioned earlier. So we want to check if this is indeed a copula. So condition one is u comma zero, which is u times zero, which is zero. So hence it is satisfied. Condition two is zero comma v, which is zero times v, which is zero, hence it is satisfied. Condition three, u comma one, which is u times one, which is equal to u, hence it is satisfied. Condition four, one is one times v, which is equal to v, hence it is satisfied. Condition five, which is the partial derivative with respect to u of this, and if you differentiate this with respect to u, you will get v, which is non-negative, so hence it is satisfied. And condition six is the partial derivative with respect to v
and this becomes u and this is greater than or equal to 0 and since hence all the six conditions are satisfied and hence all right so this is a it's a trivial example it's very easy to check all right let's look at example number number 2 Okay, so this is the completely dependent copula, and we want to check if it is a copula or not. Okay. So first condition is this, which is the minimum of u and zero, which is zero, right? So hence it is satisfied. Condition two. This is the minimum of 0, comma v, which is 0. Condition 3. This is the minimum of u, comma 1, which is u. Hence, it is satisfied. And condition Four. This this is the minimum of one comma v, which is v. Hence, it is. Remember, u and v are numbers between zero and one. So, the minimum of this is u. The minimum of this is v. Condition five is the partial derivative with respect to u of this, which is the partial derivative with respect to u of the minimum of u comma v. And this you can write as the partial derivative of one of the following u if u is less than or equal to v and v if u is greater than v okay all right and if you take the partial derivative of u with respect to u you get one v with respect v with respect to u is zero okay you guys okay Right, so hence, this is clearly non-negative, right? Right, hence, a condition V is satisfied. And similarly, condition, similarly, you can check condition 6. Okay. All right, so hence 
this is greater than or equal to zero. Hence, all six conditions are satisfied. So the conclusion is the following. Hence, C is a copula. Right? Okay, guys. All right. Now, that's the example number two. The third example is a little less trivial. Uh, so let me do that. Um, the two examples we looked at so far are pretty trivial. So this is example number number three. Okay, so we want to see if this is a copula where theta is a number between minus one and plus one. So let's check condition one, which is C u comma zero, which is u times zero times one plus uh, so we are assuming, uh, yeah, 1 minus u, okay? So this is clearly equal to 0. So condition 1 is satisfied. Condition 2 is this, right? So you have 0 times v times 1 plus theta times 1 minus v. And this is also clearly equal to 0. Condition three, C, U comma one, which is U times one times one plus theta times uh, one minus U times zero. And this is clearly equal to U. So hence condition three is satisfied. Condition four C one comma V which is one times V times one plus theta times zero times one minus V which is clearly equal to V. So so the first four conditions are clearly satisfied. Now let's look at condition five which is the partial derivative with respect to u of this. Now you need to use the product rule to differentiate this with respect to u, right? And if you do that, this is what you will get. You will get v, so I'm using the product rule. Okay. All right. Now, combining these two, uh, right, you will get the following. You will get v multiplied by one plus theta times one minus two u times one minus v. Now we need to show that this is non-negative. The argument for that is follows. Right. We know that we know that v is non-negative because it's a number between zero and one, so it is clearly non-negative. And we know that theta is a number between theta is a number between minus one and plus one by right? by what is given to us, right? Okay. So so theta goes from 
minus 1 to plus 1. Okay, and 1 minus 2u, because u is a number from 0 to 1, 1 minus 2u can take values from minus 1 to, to plus 1. All right? And 1 minus v, because v takes values between 0 and 1, 1 minus v also takes values from 0 to 1. All right. Okay, guys. So, so you have three numbers, theta taking values between minus one and plus one, one minus two u taking values between minus one and plus one, and one minus v taking values between zero and one. All right. Okay. So, hence their product, their product, the product of these three numbers. Right, uh, must take values from must take values from minus one to plus one, right? Because you should take the product of these three numbers, and you should look at the the largest values and the smallest values. You see the pot, the, the the range of the of the product. The range of values for the product must be from minus one to plus one, right? And you have a 1 in front of it. So if you add 1 to this range, if you add 1 to this range, clearly the values you will get will be non-negative, right? Hence, hence we have shown that this is non-negative. Hence, condition 5 is satisfied, right? And similarly, similarly condition 6 can be shown. So I will make the same argument for condition condition six. Right? If you do the differentiation using the product rule, this is what you will get. I'm not gonna show you the details, but I'm sure I'm sure you can do it. Okay, so once again here u, u is a non-negative number by definition. Theta by definition takes values from minus 1 to plus 1. 1 minus 2 v, because v is a number between 0 and 1, takes values from minus 1 to plus 1. And 1 minus u takes values from 0 to 1, right? Hence, the product of these three numbers, right, considering the ranges here, considering the ranges, the product of these three numbers, right, must take, must take values from minus 1 to, to plus 1, okay? And since we have a one in front, one plus in front, the, these, the, the values within the bracket must be non-negative, right? Hence, we have shown that this is non-negative, okay? So hence, all six conditions are satisfied. So hence, C is a copula. Okay, so this is a little less trivial, but not so difficult, right? Okay, so this completes uh, the video on, on the definition and the examples of copula. In the next video, I will talk about two of the most popular models for copulas.